Hello class, coming back to you from College of the Sequoias in Central California. We're still in our spring 2020 COVID-19 lockdown. And this is introduction to stats. In this section, we're gonna be talking about uh, doing some hypothesis testing on the means for two dependent samples. So this is section 11.2, and it is a hypothesis test and a corresponding confidence intervals, of course, for a two sample mean test. And that black pin's dying. Two sample mean test for dependent samples. And another thing that we call them are paired samples. And you might ask why? Why would we ever want to use dependent samples? Because everything we've done so far has been independent. So this is the idea. Can I compare the price of Motel 6 in New York City Motel 6 one night stays Yeah, oh, well, let's go more global, San Francisco. With the Hilton in Fresno or Visalia. Fresno or Visalia. Now, as many of you know, Motel 6 is one of the least expensive hotels. And the Hilton's at least middle, if not higher. Is three to four stars out of five. The prices of motel, or Prices of room rents in San Francisco, though, is much higher than Fresno or Visalia for comparable part properties. Comparable or comparable? But as it is, a Motel 6 in San Francisco is going to cost approximately the same amount as the Hilton in Fresno. Does that mean these properties are equally of value? Does this mean people would like to stay in Motel 6? as much as Hilton. And I keep trying to spell Hilton as Hilton. Hilton. No, in general, no. There, there are reasons to stay in Motel 6. If you're on a low in, low fixed income, you could definitely at least a room to put your head under, uh, or a roof to put your head under. The amenities and the bed and stuff are much nicer in a Hilton though. But the prices are effectively the same. So it makes more sense more sense to check Motel 6s and Hilton's. in the same towns to compare their value. Now, don't get me wrong, I've stayed in my share of Motel 6s because when I'm not really gonna be there for more than the night, 
I just need somewhere to sleep. Somewhere to take a shower, stuff like that. If I'm on vacation, I want, I want to be somewhere nicer. And if I can afford it, not everyone can always afford it. And I was a student once too. So it makes more sense to check Motel 6 is held in the same towns. But now this implies they are dependent on location. The sample choices are dependent on location. So that's what they mean by having a dependent sample or paired sample. Uh, and so what we would do is we would look at a Motel 6. And Hilton. In 20 different towns, maybe. To get a good comparison. We don't want to just check two towns because it might be something special about that town. Uh, notice if I'm checking 20 towns and I'm checking one hotel in each town, this tells me my sample sizes need to be the same. because they are paired up. One for each sample from each town. This is a, a dead giveaway for the dependent test. A two sample mean test that's dependent or paired n1 must equal n2 if not and it's a two sample mean test they must be independent And we're probably better off going even 30 towns. We've said it before, we want n to be greater than or equal to 30. That guarantees that they're normally distributed or enough of a normal, close enough to a normal distribution. Other than that, we have to start checking other things. So what were the criteria that we needed on a means test? or a means test, we wanted simple random sampling. Uh, it needs to be normally distributed with no outliers. or n is greater than or equal to 30. If you recall, we checked this with QQ plot and box plot. Okay. So this was one, two, and three. They must be matched pairs for this test. Or the dependent test. It's important to note 
I said N1 equals N2 is a requirement for the dependent means test. But N1 equaling N2 doesn't guarantee it's that test. In fact, a lot of times when we do surveys, a lot of people like symmetry, they like balance, they like equality. It feels more right. So if they're gonna ask 100 people in one group, they'll oftentimes try to get 100 people over the, the next group until they have a, the same size of each. It doesn't mean that they're paired. The, the difference here is I could have 100 girls and 100 boys, This doesn't indicate if they were couples or not. Coupled or paired. Just because they're the same size doesn't mean they're coupled or paired. So keep that in mind. And the one, this is unique for this example or for this type of test we have no summary data option in StatCrunch because the data has to be paired Okay, so that means don't sort the columns. Like if you do 30 hotels and record prices, keep the same town in the same line. Don't just sort the order, okay? Okay, when we do this, in StatCrunch, our choice is stats, T stats, paired. Now recall for proportion, for two, two proportion, add P1 minus P2 equals zero. the means one is different but only in the way they write it down for some reason they have decided to use mu underscore d which is like mu difference what this means is mu one minus mu two Okay, just like very similar to P1 minus P2. And our H naught, we're gonna have it equal zero. HA has this alter, the three different options. So let's take a look at an example. Look at that fun equation they have right there if you want to do it by hand. We're going to do example one. What page is this on? It's on page 127. So, lecture notes, page 127. And I'll write down the table here. We have city, 
Hampton Inn, this first example is comparing Hampton Inn and La Quintas. And we have Dallas, Tampa, St. Louis, Seattle, San Diego, Chicago, New Orleans, Phoenix, Atlanta, and Orlando. Notice they're selected throughout the country. Don't have a lot in the uh, Northeast, but a lot of places. And the prices we have are 129, 149, 149. I'm literally just copying this table down so you can copy it too or reference it from the lecture notes. Forty nine, one forty nine, one nineteen, eighty nine, seventy two, fifty nine, ninety, and sixty nine. Okay. And the question is at alpha equals zero point zero five level of significance, camp to in hotels are priced differently than La Quinta hotels. So what we're looking at, what type of alternate hypothesis are we looking at here? H naught for the two sample paired test is always mu D equals zero. And recall that's mu one minus mu two, which means you should label the groups because that changes the inequality symbol. Price differently said not equal. And in that matter, it doesn't matter which one we make mu1 or mu2. I'm gonna see if I can copy and paste this in the stack crunch. I'm hoping I can. Uh, we can look and see the box plot. Or here's the probability plot. This is the QQ plot. All the dots are close to that line, which means this is, it meets that criteria, the QQ plot. And notice the box plot doesn't have any whisker or outliers on it. There's no stars at the end. So it meets the criteria of the test. Let's see if I can get this to uh, control C. Undo the sign change. There we go. And I have this open over here. New table. Excellent. And this was Hampton. And this is La Quinta. So what were the other things that we had going on? Alpha equals 0 0.05. This was step one. Step two is alpha equals 0 0.05. We're going to go in and do our stack crunch test now. We're doing stats, T stats, paired. Even though n equal 10, they showed the box plot and QQ plot showed that meets the conditions. It, what, what's pairing them here? They're being paired by location, city. Stats, T stats paired. Since we're doing, I'll call Hampton team one and La Quinta team two.
And for the not equal to or the different one, it doesn't matter which one goes in which column. See how it says mu D right here? It also tells you right here what that mu sub D means. I don't know why they just don't put mu one minus mu two. They must have a reason. We're gonna click compute. And we get our T stat is 5.27 and the P value is 0 0.0005. And we want to compare that to alpha. Is that less than or greater than alpha? The p value is less than alpha. p vals too low. The null must go. Or reject the hoe as I like, which means we support HA. So what is HA in words? Go back to our question. The null hypothesis is that the difference was zero. If the difference is zero, it means that they're priced the same. This difference is subtracting. So the null hypothesis is they are priced differently. There is enough evidence to support the claim that Hampton Hotels and La Quinta Hotels are priced differently. Notice it didn't say which one was higher because we didn't say greater than. We can look at it a little bit though. Look at this. Hampton, every single one is in has three digits. La Quinta, most are smaller. I'm willing to say that we could have done this test and said Hampton was priced higher than La Quinta. If we did that, I have Hampton in team one. I would change this to be greater than. Now it says mu one minus mu two, the mean of Hampton hotels minus the mean of La Quinta hotels is greater than zero. And our p value is still below. So we have sufficient evidence to support that Hampton hotels are more expensive to stay at than La Quinta hotels. What else do we got in here? How did I get a different value last time? I must, did I miss see something here? I copied and pasted. So it should be the same. Huh. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. This is the American Eagle roller coaster, example two on the next page. And it's the American Eagle roller coaster problem. So the quality control manager at an amusement park feels that the amount of time that people spend waiting in line for the American Eagle roller coaster is too long. To determine if a new loading and or unloading procedure is effective in reducing wait time in line, he measures the amount of time in minutes 
people are waiting in line on seven days. After implementing, implementing the new procedure, he again measures the amount of time in minutes for people waiting in line on the similar seven days. And to make it reasonable, he chooses days when the weather conditions are similar. It doesn't make sense to do sunny days versus rainy days, less people show up on a rainy day. It looks like he does Monday at two o'clock, Tuesday at two o'clock. Looks like he does on the weekdays at two o'clock, several days. And on the weekend, he does a couple times in the day. So uh, it looks like he's got a bunch of data points. It says, is the loading unloading procedure effective in reducing wait time at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance? It says, note a normal probability plot and box plot indicate they are the differences are approximately normally distributed with no outliers. So if we do make a column of before and after, I'm just going down the list, 11.6, 25 point, this is the first row. Looks like it gets on busy on Thursday and Friday. Oh, look at that, Saturday at 4 p.m., 81 minutes. That's a, I guess at Disneyland, that's not a very long wait. 62.8, let me make sure I wrote those down all right. 11.6, 25.9, 20, 38.2, 57.3, 32.1, 81.8, 57.1, 62.8. We'll do 10.7, now the next column. Maybe I can get lucky and this will go in. I'm going to copy these rows and see if I can force this. Now, it entered it in rows and I don't like rows. There's a way to change these though. Let's see. Data arrange transpose. Data entered as rows can be switched to columns. Uh, I'll make sure make sure it works. We want all the columns selected. Let's open it in a new table. And notice it transpo, ooh. But it put the top row up here as labels up above. So maybe we better add 11.6 down here and 10.7 down there. And we did data arrange transpose. The top or the first column may appear in the header though, like here. Just enter it below. As long as the pairs stay together, the order they appear doesn't matter. I could put these in reverse order, but as long as 81.8 is next to 75.3, all is good. This was before, I'm going to label them. This is after. Okay. If you entered them, if you want to enter them by hand, please do so. Uh, let's go back and read the problem. He wants to know if the wait time is better after. Is the wait time better? 
after. So if I call this group one, if before is group one and after is group two, what symbol would make it so that the wait time is better after? Which number should be bigger and which number should be lower? This is contra contrary to what we normally think. Normally we like to think the bigger the number, the better, but now we're talking about how long you're waiting. The lower the number means the less time you had to wait. So if the second group, the after group takes less time, the first group should have bigger numbers. G1 should be greater than G2. That's a good way of setting it up. If we make this mu1, and this is mu2, then I've got mu1 minus mu2 should be greater than zero. That would be HA. Okay, so let's go through and do our hypothesis test. We're going to call group one before and group two after. And when we do that, this gives us G1 is greater than G2, which means G1 minus G2 is greater than zero. And we switch to be working with the mean, which is what the problems is about. That will be our HA and our HO is they are the same. It gives us an alpha equals 0 0.05, I see it right there. That's step two, step three is stack crunch. Stats, T stats paired. And what are they being paired by here? They're being paired, being paired by the time of day and the day of the week. That's not the one I want. There. There we go. Stats. T stats paired, I'm doing before and then after. And notice what we do here. If I click on save differences, we'll be able to see something. I think you might like this. It puts the differences in the column. The more positive numbers we have in general is more likely that one's going to be bigger, especially if they're bigger numbers. This 6.5 is a pretty big difference. There's only a couple negative values. What are the results of our paired test? Notice you can always check here and make sure you have the right H naught and HA. My T stat is 1.22. My P value is 0 0.1286, we bring down alpha and compare. P value is bigger than alpha here. So P val is not too low. We don't reject the hoe. And what does that mean? We don't support the alternate hypothesis. HA in words was after was shorter than before. So the procedure works. Procedure worked in shortening time. We're not supporting that though. There's insufficient evidence to 
to support the claim, the new procedures reduced wait times. Which feels weird, doesn't it? When we look at the values, 11.6 down to 10.7, 20 down to 19.2. Out of nine of these days, six of them, the time decreased, but it didn't decrease by very much. Not enough to argue that it was that that it, it was effective enough because on three of the days it didn't work and notice if we go back to that look at the uh confidence interval remember for the confidence interval on a two-tailed test we double alpha alpha is point Zero 0.5, we double it, it's 0.10, which makes it 90%. And our mu d equals zero is between these two. Okay. Okay, uh, well, that was that problem. I wanna take a look at one of the homework problems. Let's take a look at 11.2. Homework 11.2, problem number four. Close that thing. So this is 11.2 number four, and it's on heights of sons versus daughters, or fathers, heights of sons versus fathers. And let me narrow that window down a little bit. To test the belief that sons are taller than their fathers, a student randomly selects 13 fathers who have adult male children. She records the height of both the father and son in inches and obtains the following data. Are sons taller than their fathers? Let's write that down. Are sons taller than their fathers? That sounds like an alternate hypothesis right there. It says use alpha equals 0 0.025. Note a normal probability plot and box plot of the data indicate that the differences are approximately normally distributed with no outliers. We'll look at the data in a second. Let's read the problem. Which conditions must be the sample, must be met by the sample for this test? Select all that apply. Uh, we want the dis differences are normally distributed or the sample size is large. And we have that here. The sample size, we always want it to be let is no more than 5% of the population size. And this is a paired test, so the results must be dependent samples. Good. So let's see what they labeled the stuff. X1 is fathers. X2 or Y1 is sons. 
We'll copy that to StackCrunch in a second. Let's figure out H0 and H1 or HA. Well, this is always mu D equals mu one minus mu two equals zero. What do we want here? They're saying set up D to be X one minus Y one. This is like saying mu of X minus mu of Y. Well, what would this tell us? What's the relationship between mu of X and mu and Y? If the suns are taller and suns are y1, then the greater than sign should go, or the mouse should be eating the bigger number. When we subtract that over to the other side, we get that inequality. So we want mu d to equal zero, and then we want mu d to be less than zero. Here, this throws me off. Taller than in my head is bigger, but the way they labeled the pieces, X and Y, they put the Y as the second group, and so the taller one should be the, the latter number, the bigger number. The bigger number is the later number. And now it wants two decimal places for T0. So we will click on the icon to view the date table of data. We will load it up into StatCrunch. We'll give it this good old stats, T stats paired. We wanted father minus son. And we wanted less than zero. So here was step one, step two. Alpha equals 0 0.025, that was given. T is 0 0.00978. P value is 0 0.5038. Two decimal places on this one would be 0 0.01. Three decimal places on p-value is 0 0.504. Should we reject the null hypothesis? How does the p-value compare to alpha? The p-value is bigger. P-value is not too low. Don't reject the null hypothesis, which means don't support the alternate one. And why? Let's see what we got here. What are they asking us? Should it be rejected? We said no, don't reject it. That's what the test says. Because the p-value is it's greater than the level of significance. P-value was bigger than alpha which means we're not supporting HA. There's not enough evidence to support that suns are taller than that. We got to go with what they asked. Are suns taller? No, they're not. Okay. So that's kind of how this section went. Uh, I'll get this uploaded pretty quick. I did 11.1 .1, like Three hours ago, for some reason, Zoom still has not converted it to a video I can download. Hopefully it gets it done soon, or I might have to redo the whole video. Until then, peace.